Hello everyone. Today we're going to learn how to do factor analysis or principal component analysis on SAS. So the main reason that you use a factor analysis or principal component analysis is that we live in a big data age and there's a lot of abundant data out there. And if you're kind of thrown with all these data, what do you do with it is the first thing that you're going to probably be faced with. So with these all different type of big data, the good part is that actually you can reduce it into like three or four factors that could really explain well about the hundreds of factors that you have out there. So that is, there's maybe like about a hundred questions that you have asked in a consumer research, but at the end of the day, you could probably have like three or four factors that can still explain roughly around 75 or 80 percent of the data itself. Okay, so now going into our example, what I have asked is that what is the reason that you would use a tablet? Okay, so many people use tablet for different reasons, and there were actually 18 different type of questions that was asked about the usage of tablets, starting from reading books, doing business related stuff and about education and entertainment and so on, all the way down to using utilities like flashlights and checking weathers and so on, okay? So we asked 18 questions for 100 respondents. So you can see that um, R1, which is stands for respondent one, goes from one to 100, okay? So to give you like a brief information, um, it was asked, what's the frequency of application that you would use for a tablet? And it's a scale of 0 to 10. 0 meaning that you never use that application. 10 meaning that you use that application very frequently. So for example, respondent 1 uses the first question, which is about reading books on a tablet, as a usage scale of 6, roughly meaning that, yes, sometimes they use it, sometimes they don't use it. Okay. Let's go to another probably extreme, extreme example here. So this is right here, respondent number six, and it's the fifth question who never uses it, meaning that this respondent never uses tablet for any type of finance related um, application. So that is banking, money management, stocks, and so on. Okay, and let's go to another extreme one right here. So Respondent 13 is uses 10 for finance. So this person seems to use finance or um, banking related stuff on tablet very much frequently. Okay, so once we have that data, it is actually quite easy to run factor analysis on it. So there's actually two ways to use factor analysis or principal component analysis in this case is that you can use proc. Uh, print comp for principal component analysis, or if you want to run it as factor analysis, you can run it as proc factor. Okay, so um, if you were to run principal component analysis, all you're going to specify is method as principal. Obviously, there's a lot of different type of methods in factor analysis that you want to use. You can change um, this option to other um, type of factors if you want. Okay. But at least we're focusing on factor analysis here. So let's run um, print, uh, proc printcom for this case. Okay. So I'm going to highlight all this information. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to run my principal component analysis. Okay. okay it's running. And this is the information that I've got, okay? So yes, you've probably noticed there's a lot of information that is out there. So how do we going to uh, interpret this is probably the key question. So let's look at the eigenvalues here, okay? So eigenvalue indicates how many factors that you would probably want to have or how many reduced numbers of the 18 that you would like to keep, okay? So what I would probably look first is the cumulative. So that is, it is the percentage of how many factors is explaining the whole data. So that is, we have 18 questions. So if we go to all 18, we're going to explain 100% of them. But you can reduce it roughly around to four or five um, factors. And meaning that if you are going to have four, 
you're roughly explaining actually 80% of all the data. Okay? And another good indicator is that any um, value that has an eigenvalue of higher than 1, you will probably want to keep because it is actually helping explaining the data that you would have. So starting from factor 1, 2, 3, or 5, you will probably want to keep them. Okay? I know probably 5 is a little bit on the border because it's 1.1, but that's probably on a border decision. So you can start going with 4 or you can start going with 5. And, and we can probably um, uh, decide on the number of um, factors or principal components that you would like to keep. Okay? Another indication that you would like to probably see is that here's the eigenvalue and the graph for it. Okay? And this also indicates that okay, anything that is above five or above one, I'm sorry, is probably what you want to have. And it seems that five is a good number that you would like to probably have as the total number of uh, principal components. Okay? So given that information, what we would like to see is that we would like to see if what principal component one is kind of representing. Okay? So principal component one is actually representing, if you look at the higher value with that question, it is actually representing highly of that um, group. So that is principal component one seems that it has a high association with question 5 and question 10, question 11, question 13, and question 15, okay? Or lastly, question 18, okay? So going back to the information, so it is actually more related to, let's see, 5, it was 5, 10, 11, 13, 15, and 18, which was fi um, finance, navigation, news, um, references, and sports, and weather. Okay, So it seems that it's very much information-related factors. Or So in those cases, I would probably call principal component is related to information. Okay. So next, let's go on to the next one, okay, which is principal component two, and let's try to look at the ones that it actually has a high value of. It seems that it has question one, question four, and let's go down here, question 12, and lastly, question 16, okay? In terms of that, what it is representing is books, um, entertainment, 12 is photography, and 16 is travel. Okay? So it seems that it's probably more of a leisure type of a factor that you would probably like to have. So the first one was more about in seeking information type of users, and the second factor is probably more about leisure type of users. Okay? And let's probably do one more here. Okay, let's look at principal component three. It has a high association or a high eigen uh, vector values with question two and three and six. Okay. And three, two, three, and six is representing two was business, um, education, and medical and health care. So it's probably more of a business related or business work type of a related factor that you would like to have here. Okay. So even though I'll probably stop at three and you can probably look for um, four and five and what is probably more related. But overall, it, we had four, uh, 18 um, different type of questions, but I you could roughly run down to about um, four or five in terms of number of factors. And it seems that I kind of um, categorize as either, either um, information users or leisure users or business type of users. So it seems that those are probably the top three that you would probably seek in terms of um, interpreting what are the uh, usage reasons for a factor analysis or principal component analysis to be more precise, okay? 
Hopefully that um, this vi uh, video was helpful in order to um, run principal component analysis on SAS. And um, everybody have a nice day.